From the earliest days, man has believed that dreams and the supernatural are in some way real. All over the world, psychics demonstrate powers that their followers accept as modern-day miracles. Here in Moscow, psychic healers treat the sick with chants and incantations. And in the Philippines, psychic surgeons perform operations without knives. A metal spoon turns liquid in the hands of a psychic performer in Britain. Yes, it's happening. It's happening. Have Nearly everywhere, fortune tellers find the future in cards, crystal balls, and palms. Three out of four Americans say they've had a psychic experience. Today, you can even find a psychic at the mall. Purveyors of the supernatural have created a multi-million dollar industry. But are psychic phenomena what they appear to be? <laughs> My name is James Randi, the Amazing Randi. I'm a magician. Okay, I have here a pen. For the past 25 years, I've been investigating the claims of psychics. A psychokinetic demonstration of a supernatural nature. Watch this. Psychics often say that an object can be moved using only the power of the mind. And it moves in a miracle fashion like that. Isn't that amazing? Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Magicians can produce the same effect. I, I was of course, I was just you know, blowing on the pen. But a little suggestion and a little distraction go a long way. As a magician, there's nothing I like more than a well-executed illusion. Just look at what my friend Jamie Ian Swiss can do. But there are those who use magic tricks for more than entertainment. They convince people that what they do is real, that they have special powers. Magical thinking, you know, is a slippery slope. Sometimes it's harmless enough, but other times it's quite dangerous. Personally, I'm opposed to that kind of fakery, so I have no reservations at all about exposing these people and their illusions for what they really are. I've investigated the claims of hundreds of psychics. People aren't always happy with my conclusions, but I do have my supporters. In 1986, I was honored with a MacArthur Award. Unfortunately, most of the prize money went into defending myself against a series of libel suits related to one of my earliest and most controversial investigations. The subject was Uri Geller, a young Israeli who claimed to have supernatural powers. His remarkable affinity for metal and his psychic abilities are well documented all over the world. In the early 1970s, Geller became a superstar, the most famous psychic in the world. Okay, just a second, look at me. Visualize everything that you drew once more. He claimed to read people's minds. I'm gonna show what I got, and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but it really came very strong in. It could be two mountains with a round thing on, or two people. I, I, uh, Can I show? I, yeah, I'd like to. Am I wrong? You're right. I'm right. Good. That's what I got. Oh, that's. He claimed to bend keys with his mind. I know you're going to think this is a setup, friends, and old Tom has never conned you on anything. This, this guy <laughs> is bending this key by rubbing it. It was bent at about a, a, a one degree angle when you started out, and it's coming up on 45 degrees now and still moving. <laughs> you're thinking bend, is that what you're yes, doing? Yes, I'm saying bend. You're saying bend, yes. hard, soft? Uh, no, I'm saying bend, 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 and sometimes I say bend, is baby. Just you know, just but Geller was yes. best known for his way with spoons. Hold the tip of the spoon very, very gently. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm trying to melt the metal down. Yes, you see, I feel it. It's, yes, going. it's getting loose. It. Yeah. 
and there's no force at all in my hands. Yes, look what's like happening. This. There's no force at all. Look, the whole, you see it's becoming like plastic. The whole thing's like ready to fall off. It's, it touch it here where I'm stroking it, there is absolutely no... That is eerie. <laughs> I have a wisdom tooth. <laughs> If you can see, the eerie. metal is beginning to crack here. It's breaking. And, yeah, it's, see what's, it's just look, it's, be, it. it's becoming, it's like look, putty wax. You see? Look. And keep, keep okay. stroking it this. here. Look, you see the crack? No, don't, don't. You see the crack is becoming bigger. Yep. I melt the metal down, so, so. Ow. I want it to bend. I just say bend. Yeah, you melted it. You see? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Keep stroking your keys more. And people at home, want your watches to start working, or if there is a radio that is broken, want it to start working. Television broken, just want it, all those broken things. Now, what Geller was saying, effectively, was that wanting things could make them so. I felt that claim had to be challenged. The media, even some scientists, were taking the Geller phenomena seriously. So I decided to show, for starters, that I could at least duplicate these effects using trickery. Now, a key can be displayed in such a way that it looks like it's bending. For example, just by stroking it, you'd swear that it's bending right up before your eyes. Magicians call this process ratcheting. But to do this, the key has to be bent in advance. The hard part, of course, is how to go about bending the key without letting them catch you. Now, there are several ways. I could, for example, take it and press the tip against the top of the table. That would do it. Or, in shifting my chair backwards or forwards, as I just did, I could have taken it and dropped it below the level of the table and pressed the tip on the chair I'm sitting on, which is exactly what I just did. Did I fool you? Mentalists have been duplicating hidden drawings for years. If Mr. Geller had chosen to use trickery, he could have used any of a number of techniques. One favorite involves turning your back and covering your eyes while the drawing is being made. Now, I've always wondered why you would cover your eyes while your back is turned. But melting metal is something else again. It's done something like this. And it gets soft. So I say to it, bend, 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 and it bends. Of course, it does take a little preparation. In fact, it takes a lot of preparation. Now, this isn't proof positive that other demonstrations aren't the result of supernatural power, but isn't this a more reasonable explanation? And then, of course, there was Mr. Geller's appearance on The Tonight Show. I got a call after they booked him to appear. Would you welcome, please, Uri Geller. Johnny had been a magician himself and was skeptical. I was asked to help prevent any trickery. Nice to see you. Thanks. We, uh, we this, have only met... This scares me. This, this scares you? Well, yeah. this is just, we just got some things together here. And I told I them said, to provide their own props and not to let Geller or his tonight. people anywhere uh, near them. Also, one of our staff members uh, did some drawings which have been sealed in an envelope. Uh, and I'd like you to take your own pace when you feel like you want to try anything. Right. Do you want to try that particular uh, experiment first? When I'll feel free. When okay? you can? Sure. We'll start eliminating the ones that do not have the water. All right, without touching them. He is really suspicious, you know. Yes. I'm having a hard time with you. Okay, I don't mean to be, Yuri. I no, really no, don't. Just, just keep looking. Okay, let me rest a little, all right? All right. Um, you know, I'm surprised because before this program, your producer came and he read me at least 40 questions you're going to ask me. Well, I can ask you all kinds of questions if you'd like, if you'd like me to ask no, you questions. To, I have to have time. And, uh, um, all right, we are back. Your Uri was telling me you, you, you don't feel, what, strong tonight? I don't Is feel that... strong. It's not 
all tonight. Right now, I'm feel I'm feeling being pressed, and then I can't. Well, I'm can't not trying to press you. I really not. But, you no, know, you're only I'm, telling me, well, will you try that or that or that? Well, I thought that was the idea of uh, <laughs> of. Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not trying to put you down. Much to my surprise, the Tonight Show episode didn't have much effect on Uri Geller's career. Neither did the book that I wrote about him. But eventually, his star faded. Why people are so drawn to the irrational is something that has always puzzled me. I want to be, if I can, as sure of the world, the real world around me, as is possible. Now, you can only attain that to a certain degree, but I want the greatest degree of control. I don't, I've never involved myself in narcotics of any kind. I don't smoke, I don't drink, because that can easily just fuzz the edges of my rationality, fuzz the edges of my reasoning powers, and I want to be as aware as I possibly can. That means uh, giving up a lot of uh, fantasies that might be comforting in some ways, but I'm willing to give that up in order to live in an actually real world, as close as I can get to it. During the 1980s, I entered a world that I found filled with fantasy and rife with abuse, the world of faith healing. I developed a special interest in a television evangelist named Peter Popoff. God told me, he said, you smite that cancer with your fist. At the time, Popoff was pulling in nearly $4 million a year healing people on his miracle crusades. You've got cancer of the stomach? Are you ready for God to burn that cancer out? Here it goes in the mighty... Devil, back off. Back off, devil! Ooh. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Do you really believe you're healed? Yes. Do you think your cancers are gone now? Yes, I believe that, because God never lies, and we stand in His Word. Praise the Lord. I tell you, from now on, you're going to have a song of victory in your heart. Amen. To his followers, Popoff seemed to have divine powers. As, is it Gould, Alice Gould? He knew their names. Stand up, Alice. As well as the afflictions they'd come to cure. God is touching that thyroid condition right now. God is touching your nerves right now. God is touching your eyes. Just lift up your hands, get ready, here it comes. He also knew the personal details of their lives. You're going to hear good news from Charles before everything is over. I'll tell you, he's going to be completely delivered because of your prayers, because of your faith. Here it comes, complete healing in Jesus. Ooh, mighty name right now, right now, right now. Amen. It's all right to praise the Lord. I suspected that Popoff's revelations were other than divine. The radio scanner we brought to the hall picked up a decidedly worldly source. Hello, Petey. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. Popoff was being prompted by his wife through a wireless earpiece. John? Do you leave Johnson? She'd gotten her information from prayer cards filled out by the faithful before the show began. She wants to get rid of the walker. You want to get rid of this walker, sister? Oh, glory. How long have you been walking on that walker? About three years. Three years. She lives at 1627 10th Street. 1627 10th Street? Is that right? That's right. She has arthritis all over. Ooh. Burning this arthritis right out of your body. Take a few steps just to make the devil mad. Hallelujah. That's it. Just move around a little bit. There she goes. Just walk with me. Oh, glory to God. She's not going to need that walker anymore. God's just putting new strength, new health. Burning that arthritis out of her body. Just keep going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was able to arrange for another broadcast of the Miracle Crusade on The Tonight Show. But this time, the wireless prompting was included. In 1987, Peter Popoff declared bankruptcy. Greater 
is he! Brighter is he! The laying on of hands takes on new meaning in the Philippines, where psychic surgeons perform miraculous operations without knives. I investigated this phenomenon, then went on The Tonight Show to demonstrate what I'd learned. Believe me, what you're seeing is strictly special effects, it's sleight of hand, and nothing more. And this is the way it looks. <laughs> a little animal blood and a few chicken parts complete the illusion. A bonus. That's a bit better, just a second, just one second now. Maybe better for you. <laughs> you don't feel any better? <laughs> oh, no, that doesn't come out. This is where I live with several birds and an old red cat outside of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. From here, I run my investigations, write my books, and go about lecturing. Recently, I was asked to give a class of college freshmen a chance to evaluate one of the oldest systems of fortune telling, astrology. Well, you know, I started life as a, as a magician. I still am a magician, I guess. I think it's in the DNA. I'm not too sure. but. Uh, I'm an actor playing the part of a wizard. I know how people are deceived. I know how they deceive themselves. And many magicians, most magicians, really allow people to deceive themselves. Would you like to see me fool you? Yeah. Who's wearing a wristwatch here, a regular, ordinary wristwatch? <laughs> mm. You've been a good girl, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> That's a Seiko. I thought it was a Rolex for a minute. Oh, well. <laughs> now, what time does it say on your watch? It says nine minutes before three, and it says it's the 2nd of October, right? Very good. Open up your hand for me, flat like that. The clean one. She almost changed, you know that? Almost changed. Now, I'm going to put the watch face down your head. Put your finger of your other hand on the back of the watch, okay? Very good. Now, my watch says nine minutes to three, so we disagree slightly, but not enough for any never mind. Okay, watch what happens now. I'm really concentrating now. Oh, I think I hurt myself. <laughs> Don't laugh, this is science. <laughs> Let me see now, holding it only by this. Oh, would you tell the folks what time it says on your watch now, please? <laughs> it says 3.40. But 3.40, how time flies when you're having fun. Isn't that wonderful? No. Now, let me show you something. This is such a little tiny itty bitty watch. Here, hold it tightly in your hand. Don't lose. Oh, my oh. goodness. <laughs> oh. What happened? Oh, the gentleman was carrying it over here behind his waist, and he didn't even know it. There you go. Wait, you wait, have your watch. Wait, 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 wait. The trickster never works alone. His audience assists him. If he does his job well, they want to be fooled. Uh, Sherla, did you pass that back? Wendy? For the astrology test, each student was given a detailed horoscope. Robin, did you pass it over to they were told it was drawn up by a professional based on information they had supplied about when and where they were born. Actually, these horoscopes were not quite what they appeared to be. I'd like you to share something with me, if you'd be so kind, just with a show of... I asked the students to grade them for accuracy on a scale of one to five, five being the most accurate. Uh, how many gave it a one? Let's see a show of hands. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we scored pretty highly with this then. Let's do a little experiment. You've got your horoscopes right in front of you. Take them in your hand like this and hand them over your shoulder to the person behind you. Okay, everybody, and the guy at the end down there, you'll have to come up to the front because these people in the front don't have one now. Okay? Everybody change them around. Everybody's got a horoscope. Open up somebody else's horoscope and read it carefully, please. Oh, my God. This is the same. Oh, 
What a surprise. <laughs> they had all received the same horoscope. The personality descriptions were generally true of everyone, like recently you have had to recover from a disappointment. Some of them seemed specific because they were so personal. Your sexual adjustment has presented some problems for you. And there were others that anyone might hope would be true. You have a great deal of unused capacity. People like to believe certain things are true. And they like to fall for very specific, absolutely, enormously accurate horoscopes, right? right. Of course they are. Did you have a question? Yes, I have a question. So why do people persist in uh, ascribing to these systems? That's the big question, of course. And psychologically, that is the most interesting question. I think that people are trying to get some control over their lives. Mm -hmm. By knowing more about themselves, of mm -hmm. course, they get control over their lives. But that's what we're doing, all of us, each and every day of our lives. Whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, whether it's a love interest, whether it's health, we're trying to get control of our lives. We're looking for power. And astrology offers you apparently a very old and a very easy formula whereby you can do that sort of thing. What you've presented me today is evidence that this can be misused or abused, but you have not convinced me that there is nothing to this. Oh, no, no, I didn't intend to do that. Okay, and, and I feel that your exercise today was kind of cynical and one-sided, and somehow it is wise to be um, unbelieving in this. Well, I can't thing. prove it doesn't work. And, I can never prove it doesn't work. And I've work. seen it a lot of times where intellectuals have, had, have wanted to disprove mystical things because since it didn't fit into their framework of beliefs, That's they, true. they wouldn't allow it. But I can't prove to you that Santa Claus doesn't exist. I really can't. I can't disprove anything. I can't prove a negative. But I can show you that it's not very likely to be true. That's the best I can do. Needless to say, my message isn't always popular. My friend Ray Hyman is a psychologist, and he has an idea why. We seem to be uh, taken as we're taking something away and not giving something yes. in return. Yes. And these people want something, they're looking for something. And I think we have to understand what is it they're searching for and what they're seeking. Ray has an insider's perspective on these questions. He once worked as a professional palm reader. On a recent visit to Florida, he allowed me to observe while he gave readings to two volunteers. Now, I want to look at a few other things before we go very far. I look at your thumb, which is the most important. Ray started reading palms to help put himself through college. There's a little narrowing of the second joint here. That's, that's tact. That suggests tactfulness. At the time, he was convinced there was nothing to it. Uh, this is the spiritual, mental. I had no belief that it would work. But to be convincing, I did read the books, and I did study the lines the way, and told it as it's supposed to be told. And to my surprise, it worked. And then I became a very rabid believer in palm reading. There is a break in your lifeline. This is your lifeline right here. So you've had some physical problems. You still may have some problems here, some medical problems of some sort. You he was right it. about that, that I had had some health problems. Is there anything there about my mother? About your mother. Uh, the one thing, that, the, the thing that's clear is that uh, right from the beginning, uh, you didn't want to be dominated by her. You want to make up your own mind about what your life is going to be like and so on. I have been very headstrong when it comes to my mother. She has kind of tried to dominate me sometimes, and I've rebelled against it. At the same time, you wanted to be, you wanted to be on your own terms and stuff like that. A he was pretty right on the money with a lot of things. Maybe he's got some part to himself that others are not in touch with, and he knows yeah, these things. Concerned about the relationship between your mother and yourself. As a palm reader, Ray was um, quite successful. I was saying... Then a college friend bet him that he would do just as well if he told his subjects the opposite of what he read in their palms. He decided to give it a try. And I did this on my first client, and she didn't say a word. She had no reaction at all, which was very spooky to me because I'm used to feedback. Um, I thought it was because I bombed. But it turned out because she was so stunned, I was so accurate. And this was really a shock to me because I had done everything wrong. So I did it the next client wrong. And then I realized it doesn't make any difference what you tell them. It's more 
what you convince them, how good you are, and what you get them to believe. As, to what As a professional psychologist, Ray is very much aware of the role that careful observation can play in a reading. You're living in a strange world. Uh, you'd be better if you're living maybe 50, 40 years ago in some ways. <laughs> I've always said that. I should have been born a long time ago. This pr present world is, is presents problems for you, and you're not too happy with it. You'd be much and more from the way she was dressed and so on, I could say that she'd rather be living in, in an earlier time than today. In fact, she was dressed for an earlier time anyway. There's a change. There has been, uh, there for a while, looked like you had two jobs or two careers. I'm not sure. And uh, very recently, you have switched. In fact, there's been a major career change. Um, I've been in the same career for six years. Next year, I'm thinking about changing careers, but I haven't done it yet. So he could just be a little off in his timing. If you set people up right, you can tell them most uh, anything. If they really got a creative and intelligent mind, they can make sense out of it, no matter how crazy it seems to be. They can find a way of, of, of reinterpreting it so that it really fits them like a glove. This person wants me to succeed. I should work out some accommodation. Now, you certainly don't need someone to deliberately fool you to have what seems to be a psychic experience. Your mind can create one all by itself. Let's say you, you don't like to fly and you're worried about a trip you're going to take, then suddenly during the flight, the plane suddenly, whoa, drops a few thousand feet because of a downdraft. You might very well choose to think that you had some kind of psychic intuition about this. But what you forget is that you've had that same queasy feeling every time you've gotten on an airplane. And if it doesn't fulfill itself, you forget about it. You see, the brain is constantly searching for relationships. It's trying to work out cause and effect so we can know what to expect in our lives. That's natural. The brain is very good at this, but it does make mistakes. And one way to explain these mistakes is by some kind of psychic explanation. My investigations have taken me to dozens of countries, but until recently, one of the most interesting wasn't open to scrutiny. It's long been rumored that Russia harbors psychic talent like nowhere else in the world. The country has an ancient mystical tradition. Good morning. Good morning and the sir. government has encouraged psychic research. To Moscow? That's right. Any luggage to check in, sir? Two pieces. Now that the country is open to visitors, I wanted to check things out for myself. I had seen the films that came out during the Cold War. Juna was a famous healer who had Brezhnev as a client. Karl Nikolaev could apparently turn on lights with the force of his will. The most famous Russian psychic is no longer living. Her name was Nina Kulagina. During a long career, she appeared to move all sorts of things through the power of her mind. Now that the media are no longer strictly controlled, there's a vast new audience for the paranormal on Russian television. Every night, a program called The Stars Speak precedes the news with an astrological forecast. The psychic Kasparovsky has even used television to demonstrate his claimed ability to control pain. In this case, during a live operation. There are even commercials that extol the miraculous. During the Cold War, both the Soviets and the Americans carried out research on psychic warfare. At one time, there was fear in the Pentagon about a psychic or psi gap. The Russians claim some success with psychic mind control, 
but their evidence was sketchy. So I was interested to find that scientists at the prestigious mm -hmm. Institute so. of the Brain in Moscow had reported measuring psychic effects under test conditions. I arranged to observe the experiment. Uh -huh. The data they'd collected in their test seemed promising. I simply could see if there's the same effect. You see, this is just before. It appeared that the psychic had been able to change the brain waves as well as the blood pressure of the test subject. If these results could be confirmed, it would be a real breakthrough for parapsychology. To make sure that the scientist would not know what the psychic was doing, it was agreed that he would be isolated in a remote wing of the complex. Since it was founded in 1926, the Institute has been a national center for the study of the brain. But much of the work done here had until recently been kept secret. Sit down, please. The psychic's name was Ignachenko. Very good. According to parapsychologists in Moscow, he was the real thing. All right, we now have a uh, little over one minute before we will start the selection process. Accompanying him was Zoya, his assistant. The experiment would last an hour, broken down into four 15-minute tests. During each test, Ignachenko would attempt to change either the subject's brain waves or his blood pressure. Or he might be asked to do nothing at all. Now he reaches inside and he takes one of these at random. At the beginning of each test, Ignachenko randomly determined what he would do. What do we have? Null is the null. No. Okay, so we do nothing for 15 minutes. For the first segment, Ignachenko would not attempt any kind of influence. This will be like a control. The scientists began their measurements, unaware of the psychic selection. For phase two, Ignachenko chose a heart symbol. He would try to change the subject's blood pressure. We are raising the blood pressure, beginning from the pelvis and working along the backbone. Until there's burning in the backbone. That's enough. There's no need to go any further. The spreading has already started. Phase three, the brain. Okay. Ignachenko would try to change okay. brain waves. Stimulation. The pituitary. Stimulation of the pituitary. Okay. Like that. Good, like that. The fourth and last test would again focus on changing brain waves. He will now be very smart. We have stimulated both the right and left brain. When the experiment was complete, the scientists examined their measurements for changes in the subject's brain waves and blood pressure. Any variation from normal would indicate a psychic influence. All right, now let, let's handle them one at a time. What is our conclusion in test number one? 
If you remember, during the first test, Ignachenko had done nothing. It could be the blood pressure. The scientists saw a change in the subject's blood pressure. Then, uh, number two. In test two, Ignachenko had tried to change blood pressure. In test the effect was on the brain. I think so. Sergei may disagree. This time, they detected a change in his brain waves. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we think on three here? With some disagreement, they called the next test correctly for the brain. Maybe we're brain in third case. Maybe. Maybe. OK. That's brain. What about number four? The last test had been another attempt to change brain waves. No, nothing. No, OK. But the scientists found no change at all. All right, shall we uh, announce the results then? Let's the experiment had produced one positive result out of four. Just what would be expected by chance alone. Not very convincing evidence. So what about their previous claims? I had an idea what might be at work here. I suspected that in the past, when they examined their data, they had known what effect they were looking for. In scientific lingo, that the test had not been blinded. They confirmed this, raising the possibility that their previous work had not been objective. To see some correlation. But one of the group believed that the problem lay elsewhere. I feel strongly that it is impossible to accurately measure these extrasensory phenomena by observing electrophysiological indicators because the methods are too crude. But remember that yes. modern methods, no matter how complicated, technical and, yes. and technically perfect and advanced, are of no use whatsoever unless it is conducted in a double-blind fashion. Um, you know, it, of course, the results of a single test are in no way conclusive. But one thing I've learned over the years is that scientists, like the rest of us, have an uncanny ability to find what they're looking for, whether it's there or not. Communism, from its very start, was considered a scientific system. With its failure, many Russians had become suspicious of science altogether. At the same time, private enterprise has begun to develop and operates largely unchecked. A good example is health care. It used to be provided exclusively by the state. Modern Western medicine was the model. Now some clinics charge for service and practice pretty much as they wish. The traditional People's Medical Center in Moscow opened in 1990. Some 30,000 people pass through here every year. The treatments here consist of an eclectic mix of folk remedies and psychic healing. The average charge is 50 rubles, about half a day's wage for many. There are therapies for nearly every ailment, from cancer to impotence. This healer claims to be able to alter the body's chemistry through the power of his will. Down the hall, a team of healers uses a somewhat different approach. We were told that these patients were having their biofields adjusted. Psychics say that biofields, or auras, are a visible form of energy that radiates from the human body. Sick people's biofields need work. Well, 
голова откинута на спинку кресла, ноги не перекрещены. Bottles of water are found throughout the clinic. They're here to be charged by the healer's energy. Later, the water will be consumed for its curative powers. Healing claims are difficult to test. Suggestion alone is psychologically powerful, and the body's immune system can cure most disease without any help whatsoever. All right. I am pouring some tap water into this glass here. But the clinic claimed that its healing waters have qualities that are detectable, so I decided to test them. Now, first of all, we're testing to show that there is no charge, no charge on this water at the moment. They used a dowsing rod to measure the charge. It's a simple device that, beyond whatever other powers are claimed for it, responds to the slightest movement of the hand. There's no charge, though, no is charge, that correct? No charge. Very well. I'm going to ask the gentleman now to put the charge on the water. He's showing, he's showing the field, the field of apparently the field of charge goes water. out for several meters. I wanted to find out whether they could tell the difference between this charged water and plain water if there were no visual cues. Now, if we were to place a shield like this around the glass, can he still detect the field? They said the shield wasn't a problem, but that such a test just couldn't be made. It seems that the charge would be picked up by all other water nearby, making differentiation impossible. We tried to find another approach. You'll check it by this. They claimed that charged water would reduce blood pressure. I would simply have my blood pressure measured before and after drinking some of it. But here, blood pressure was measured rather uniquely. Are we going to use this machine eventually? I requested that a standard blood pressure cuff be used. You'd like to prove that you'll say how was how is your blood pressure, and then you'll check it by this. Okay. Who will check it? This gentleman or somebody else? But once again, we were stymied. No one in the entire facility knew how to use the cuff. There's no one any any doctors here. Just all not traditional. Our host, the director of the clinic, interrupted to remind us of the importance of what we were dealing with. He said the water had other, even greater virtues. It aided weight loss, increased energy, even bolstered the immune system. Imagine this water appearing all over America in different bottles, green, rose, red, and people could drink it quietly and improve their health. If this water is so powerful and so important and has such very special qualities, it must be possible to tell whether or not it's ordinary water or charged water, regardless of all these other influences. Uh, we've been told, yes, that can be done. Now we're being told, no, it can't be done. Because there are too many Before he came into the room, we mixed these up like that. Finally, it was concluded that if a charged glass of water was kept at a certain distance from other glasses of normal water, there would be minimal contamination. Three glasses would be placed around the room. One of them would contain charged water. And we wish him to tell us which one. And we wish him to tell us which one. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll take a seat over here. The amounts are the same? There would be three attempts to identify the glass of charged water. The law of averages would give one accidental success. Three hits by chance alone would be improbable. He said that this is charged. This is the charge. Yes. Okay. If they leave the room now, we'll do it a second time with randomizing. Okay. Если можно еще раз повторить это. Ah, but there was once again a problem. 
All the glasses of water are becoming charged. When he comes in here, the other glasses start ticking on a charge because he starts thinking. The charging is driven by this mental energy, the energy of thought. Apparently, the very act of measuring a charge created a new charge. Okay, so it and it's in fact is getting uh, uh, charged each of them. It seemed that the water had yet another special quality, an inability to be tested at all. Incredible. Before I left Moscow, there was one more psychic specialty that I wanted to investigate. Two women in a nearby suburb had developed a reputation for an unusual ability. Inga Pachenko and Svetlana Chernetskaya claimed to be able to describe a person's life and character in detail, using only a picture of them for inspiration. They even said the Moscow police had called on them to help solve difficult cases. Because it's easy to inadvertently pass on information, particularly with such congenial people, I determined that I would work diligently to eliminate any feedback. From a group of pictures that we supplied, they selected a quite remarkable one to work on. Ted Bundy is best known as a serial killer and is believed to have brutally murdered more than 30 women. He was executed nearly four years before this session. I'd read about him and found that ironically he was a psychology major in college. He was also married and had a child. He's good at meditation, he's athletic, and it seems to me that to some degree was involved in wrestling, tennis to some degree. He has a pleasant wife. He has a very pleasant wife. It started like most readings do, a laundry list of possibilities. She's cute, attractive. Blonde, reddish hair. They were looking for me to respond in some way. Inga, maybe you can say something. He looks like Ori Geller, doesn't he? He graduated from college. He has some kind of military training. I think he's a psychologist by education, um, psychology, history. It seems to me he's been to Switzerland. There was one overwhelmingly important fact about this person. If these women had any psychic ability, they should have been able to pick up on Bundy's horrendous crime. You know, the pretty wife and everything is not maybe yeah. the most yeah. outstanding yeah. thing yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel this is a man with one moral direction. He has a wife. One child, a boy. Three years ago, something happened that was critically important to his fate. I, I feel it so clearly. If you would ask questions, we could continue our talk in a particular direction. It was hard to deny these women, but it seemed to me that any questions I asked would give them information. He is original in that he can behave in many different ways, many variations to his behavior. Strong-willed, Though it's hard to say this about a person in a negative direction, I'm uncomfortable saying that. A leader, who is patient, 
manages a group well, has an excellent memory, outstanding. If we had feedback, it would be a completely different emotional search. I think it's time maybe I told them the whole story. This is a photograph of a man named Ted Bundy. He was executed by the government because he is a mass murderer. How well did they do? Well, Bundy did have more than one moral direction, but then again, so do a great many other people. Nothing important happened to him three years ago because he was already dead. He was executed four years ago, and I'm not inclined to give them that kind of latitude. In all, two-thirds of the statements the women made were wrong, and the rest weren't very specific. His wife was brunette, not blonde. His child a girl, not a boy. He was neither a wrestler nor a tennis player, and he had never been in the military or to Switzerland. It's true that he did study psychology. Interesting. I was saying that he had a sad, yes, the eyes of a sadist, negative. had a negative psyche, the morality of a negative character. I, I said that categorically almost. Not quite. Before there can be results, we need to be unfettered. And we aren't unfettered with him. The information doesn't come. He doesn't inspire us. He makes a stopper, a cork. The woman is complaining, Jim. The woman is complaining. A lot of people hate my skepticism, and I think I understand why. The psychics offer wonder and endless possibilities in a world that often seems difficult and mundane. They promise health, wealth, wisdom, eternal life. But if you examine the record, it's not the psychics, but the hard-nosed scientists who have actually delivered the things that improve human life. And to me, science describes a world far more interesting than any psychic fantasies. It's a good world. Not perfect, but it's ours. So we better learn to live with it the way it is. Now I'm just doing it very gently, very gently. Remember, plead innocence through this whole thing. I know nothing. I know nothing. I, ah, it's just at the right point now. But, see, you can hammer that. You can handle it quite freely. And we're lucky. It really doesn't show very much. Just the tiniest little bit of a, of a crack there. Now, you see how flexible it's getting, you say? Okay, now it's broken, you see, and they don't know it. Watch. Now, let go of it. And you tell them to let go. And then you hold it up like this, you see? So you do this kind of thing and you say, oh, look, it's getting flexible. And you let the top part droop over very slowly. I'm pinching it pretty tightly. Uh, the control is not all that easy. And then turn it sideways like this and it starts to go over to one side and it gets to this point. You say, hold your hands beneath it. Hold your hands beneath it. Go ahead. All right, like this. And, ah, oh, and it drops in two pieces. A miracle. And then you look at them straight in the eye and you say, and you know, I don't know how that happens. It's just such a mystery. Funding for NOVA is provided by Johnson & Johnson, the signature recognized around the world for commitment to quality health care products for the entire family.